In August of 2018, retired Colonel Robert Strong, his wife Barbara, his daughter Lee, and two of his grandsons, Stephen and Seth, met to reminisce over his experiences in the United States Air Force. Although these conversations were recorded for us, his family, we're more than happy to share. So, <clears throat> what happened that made you have to eject out of the OV-10? Well, uh, I, uh, <laughs> long time, long time uh, uh, occupant of uh, Vietnam. I had gotten there, uh, oh, I already was all checked out in the OV-10. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, all I had to do was get the local uh, communications and and figure out where my home base was and stuff like that. And uh, uh, then I had to go through the the indoctrination for flying in Vietnam. And I had completed the course and was set for my night checkout. And uh, I took off, and it wasn't night yet, but it was took off and it was going to be. And just before takeoff, it was a simulated combat uh, situation. But just before takeoff, they found a detachment of NVA. Uh, well, I had a Vietnam map here, but it, uh, I don't know where it is. I know that's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, the, the base where all the training was taking place was just south of camp. Are you familiar with Vietnam at all? Not really. No? Uh, dusk. Mm -hmm. But it was supposed to be a night checkout and it was going to be dark very soon. So I had the map in front of me and remember I don't know this area very well. I've, I've flown a couple of local flights out of uh, uh, Fan, Fan Rang, Fan Rang, Phuket, no. Not camera It, it didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Uh, and, <clears throat> and so I'm flying, <clears throat> I'm flying with, with my knees on the stick and, and trying to look across the valley to the, uh, to the, which one of the peaks that I'm supposed to be aiming for. Mm. And uh, and when you take off from the base, there's a ridge of hills right on the north side of the base. And, the, and then it ends just about the time the runway ends. So <clears throat> you take off fly around the end and I had already been told and I'm still so new that when I look at the at the at the surface all I can see is a beautiful country all green and nice and quiet and so you know I can't believe there's really a war going on down there and uh, uh, And they said, <clears throat> never fly over this mountain ridge or right there. Don't fly over that because there is a, an anti-aircraft gun down there that we've never been able to find. But he comes up occasionally and, uh, and so we just don't fly over that area until the Army can get in there and clear it all up, whatever. <clears throat> so I am so convinced that I've got to 
aim in on this mountain peak across the way. And, <clears throat> and I'm watching that and looking at my map and checking and the uh, right engine quit. And, <clears throat> and then the left engine quit. And there's only two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got real quiet. Yeah. And uh, John, what's his name, the, the, the captain in the back seat, yeah. was saying, did you do this? Did you do that? Take your helmet off. Talk back and forth. Yell, yeah, I did that. I did it. I did, you know. Nothing was working. We finally decided that we must have taken a hit from that guy down there. And, <clears throat> and we're into the, the valley now. And turning away from Cameron, I could see a highway up ahead. And so I was going to aim for that highway and land on that. And the guy in back said, we're below whatever the altitude is, but there's, there's 1,500 feet, I think, was what. Well, anytime you, you're having a, an emergency below 1,500 feet, you're supposed to get out. And I said, well, you know, we only got a little ways to go to get to the highway. He said, too far. The rules say bail out at 1,500. Well, uh, okay, get ready, put your hat on. And it, it, when, I, when I pull the handle, it sends him up and then me. And uh, uh, and so I did and we're, we're both in the air and I'm I'm looking, thinking that the airplane is going to keep on flying. And I'm looking and looking all over the horizon. I can't see airplane. And I looked down, and it was right under me, blowing up. You know, we had rockets and mm -hmm. guns, and everything was loaded. Mm. And uh, and here I am. I'm thinking. All these time, I almost bailed out once in in uh, in uh, T sixes, and I got up onto the edge, ready to to push off and go over, and the engine started. <laughs> so, so, so I sat back down, and I'm thinking, well, I finally got the I got, finally got into a parachute, and now I'm going to land in my own fire. And as I was going down. The heat from the from the thing moved me aside just a little bit so that I landed right beside the crash. Yeah. And I immediately got behind the biggest tree I could see because everything was still firing. And <clears throat> as it was quieting down a little bit, I heard this big crash off to the left back down the route that we'd come in and I said John is that you moving and he said no sir I'm not moving and I said well boy something's something between you and me is making a lot of noise so don't move because I'm gonna shoot it how dumb with my 38 <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take on whatever's Whatever bad guys, I figured that something was out there that that shot us down, maybe. And <clears throat> the next thing I know, that big noise start crashing through the jungle, making this big. But it was we were here, the noise in between, and it was going that way. So then. Uh, uh, on the way down, I'm I'm just following all the rules, and I'm not. I don't take my radio out. I don't. I'm just convinced where I'm going to land. 
and John has got his radio up, antenna out, to reporting that we're that we're down. And uh, and then when he landed, uh, he broke his antenna off but he had an extra radio, so he's talking again. And <clears throat> uh, and so we're now expecting somebody to come in and lift us out. So I'm following all the directions that we've just gotten at Snake School on how to direct somebody in. And I'm telling them, you know, lift this, right, or whatever. And uh, uh, thinking that I was talking to a helicopter, and <laughs> and and the noise that I was directing went right over me, but it was a but it was a O one. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, stop now! Yeah. Right over me! Yeah, okay, stop now! Jesus Christ! So. So anyway, uh, finally a, a helicopter did come in and it dropped the, the, that uh, jungle penetrator, uh, diamond shaped thing that you pull, you pull the arms down on it and climb on, hold on and sit on those arms that you've pulled out. And uh, they pulled me up to the airplane and it came time to to get John and boy he was he was I I just looked like I'd gotten uh, you know it was breakfast time and time to go to work I, I, I look fine and he comes up and he he's bleeding and he's just really a mess because he wore his boots too big and his helmet too big uh, for comfort Oh yeah. So, uh, uh, the, the, and they took us back to to the base, mm -hmm. and of course by now it's 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 night. So there's no way they're going to do anything tonight. But they got an army. The army was there on the post with us, and. Uh, Uh, they they set up uh, this major and his and his I don't know what the yeah. group was called but anyway probably uh, uh, half a dozen or so guys to go out the next morning and secure the area and pick up anything that could be used by the bad guys from the crash, from the crash site. Sure. And when he came back, he said, this is my third tour in Vietnam and I have seen a lot of big cats around here. But he said, you are really lucky that you didn't shoot at that noise because those are the biggest <laughs> footprints that I've ever seen. <laughs> Whatever that cat was, it it was really really big. So we lucked out, yeah. uh, and, oh, uh, wow. and and that was uh, that was the end of that one. Uh, I've got pictures here, yeah. some place of uh, of the two of us standing by the wreckage that he brought oh, in. Oh yeah, that'd be all right. And. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did anyway, you ever figure out what made it quit? Was it a? Was it? Did you run out of? Was it? Did you get some ground fire? Is that what made the engine quit? Or yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, Severed a fuel it, line or something. It just uh, uh, took the whatever it is. We hit the it hit the fuel line. Yeah. And we were no more fuel, and it doesn't run well that yeah. way. <laughs> No, so, no. so that's what it was. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, Keeps right on going until the fuel quits. And there's no go. <laughs> yeah. I wow. tried to, I tried all the things that it said to do and nothing worked. Mm. 
So anyway, that was the. Uh, wow. And and I'm still, you know, like uh, the end of my second week in Vietnam, and I've already been shot down. <laughs> so you went back to back to headquarters or whatever, and hopped in another OV-10 and kept on flying, or. What well, was? yeah, uh, I I. Uh, that was my final ride for the school, and uh, and that's when I was sent off to Kuchi oh. to be the commander of the detachment there. That so what was the other thing we were going to talk about? The uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah, Cuban Missile Crisis. What happened with that? The Cuban Missile Crisis. Uncle Travis wanted us to talk well, about that one. And the nuclear there, weapons. There we are again. Uh, <laughs> I mean, here at the very beginning of my of my OB-10 time in Vietnam, and so I'm in school uh, in California going to B-52 school, but I'm still a student in the classes, and the, OV and the Cuban crisis starts, and they start these missions, 30-hour uh, B-52 mission that fly from uh, California. Castle Air Force Base. What? Castle Air Force Base. Castle, yeah. At water. Yeah, oh my god. I was in second grade at this time. I see. Yeah. And you remember all that. I do. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, she's right. <laughs> and, uh, Uh, and so I was, I, I wasn't even qualified in the airplane, I'm still a student. Mm -hmm. But uh, there wasn't anything else to do, and I didn't want to just sit around and wait, so I got on with extra crew member uh, and got an opportunity to fly on these things. But, you know, a 30-hour mission, there's going to be some time there where, Somebody else wants to fly, or mm -hmm. somebody else wants to rest. Mm -hmm. So, from Castle, we flew across to uh, to uh, Homestead, which is the southern tip of Florida, mm -hmm. and then around the, the around Cuba, and then from Cuba straight over to Gibraltar, and up up the, the Mediterranean to the end, turn around and retrace all the way back. So it, there were three refuelings. Yeah, but I say you had to refuel. Yeah, yeah. okay. And, uh, and I don't know how many of those I made, but uh, not maybe, maybe two or, or maybe three, I don't know, whatever I could get on. And, uh, and then uh, well that was, I mean that wasn't very exciting mm -hmm. um, because just, I wasn't seeing any action. Yeah. We're just, we're just flying and, and uh, mostly uh, the uh, radar nav was keeping track of what what they could see on the ground and on radar, and uh, and then a uh, what did we do after that? Oh, that was from Castle. Then I went to to got my base assignment in uh, Bergstrom. And so from Bergstrom, we flew up to Boston and out over whatever that big patch of, uh, I don't I can't remember the name of the water, but anyway, the water that separates Canada from uh, Greenland. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And flew up that to uh, 
Thule, and then from Thule, we had to make two or three circles uh, around the, the Arctic Circle, all the time monitoring the, the area toward Russia. And then from there to Alaska, and from Alaska, uh, south, south, southeast, and anyway, as, as we got close to Canada, we had to, uh, uh, I remember the refueling area was called Cold Coffee. <laughs> and, we, and we refueled again there and on down the coast to Oregon area and then from there back to Austin. Wow. And, uh, and that was another uh, 30 or 33. And that was it. Oh, then, then uh, it was still going on. Uh, all this time, six, six fifty. Oh, I, <laughs> I went to school in Norfolk for six months. Uh, uh, what they call it Armed Forces. Uh, oh, uh, AFSC, right? Is that what it is? AF, is it Armed Forces Staff College. That's what it is, Staff College. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then when I got through with that, I got assigned to Grand Forks. And what do you know? They're still flying that. <laughs> that silly that, right. thing. <laughs> <laughs> that North mm -hmm. route all this time. Yeah. Boy, can you imagine the money that that cost. Oh, I must have been unreal. That, yeah. that they, it was like. Uh, it was like uh, they were launching out uh, three times a day. Wow. Uh, and, you know, they, it was just a trail up there. If you could, mm -hmm. and that was the point of it, was that we'd make sure that we were on the Russian. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're on their edge. You yeah, so that they could see that, that we were that we were ready.